Syria, a country where an uprising began as the Arab Spring was toppling dictators from Egypt to Libya. But instead of democracy, this uprising has given way to a brutal civil war. 17 months into this conflict, the toll on civilians has just been staggering. And now there are calls for America and our allies to do something about it. ABC's Alex Marquardt and his producer Nightline's Bartley Price are in Syria tonight, filed this report, and we've got a warning. Some of the images you're about to see may be disturbing. The rising sun signaled it was time to move. The border was clear. We hiked up the hill, trying to stay out of view of the nearby Turkish military outpost. We've waited all night to cross, but haven't been able to because the Turks had secured the border. The sun has just come up, and they're nowhere to be seen. So we've crossed through this fence, which is the entrance to Syria. The countryside is deceptively calm. Just a short drive away, fighting is raging for the ancient city of Aleppo. Between rebels calling themselves the Free Syrian Army and the repressive government of President Bashar al-Assad. Our BBC colleagues Ian Panel and Darren Conway were there, pinned down behind rebel lines. We know there are snipers all around here because it's an urban area, the sounds ring out and what you can't tell is which direction they're actually coming from. Aleppo is one of the oldest cities in the world. John the Baptist's father is said to be buried in a tomb there. It's also right on the main road to Damascus. If the rebels take Aleppo, it could be the turning point. Already, women and children have fled Aleppo, this Syria's largest city. As we drive into the town of Atareb, just on the outskirts of Aleppo, it is a sprawling, eerily quiet scene of almost total devastation. Out of the rubble came Zalouk Mohammed, an unexpected smile amid the destruction. She took us to her house. Now she lives here alone. How about it, isn't she? I have no idea where my family went, she said. I'm brave. This is my house. These are my neighbors. Inside, she shows us the sparse room where she lives. No power, no electricity. We have nothing, she said, and still, I will stay. Our driver then tells us we have to leave. Assad forces have been known to shell if they catch wind of journalists around. We headed south into Idlib province, scene of some of the worst fighting of this civil war. Most villages we pass, now guarded by free Syrian army fighters. Walking through the streets of this village, life at first appears normal. But it's not long before the signs of the conflict surface. The burned out buildings, units of rebel fighters driving around, graffiti supporting the free Syrian army. Abdel Latif Al Hamoud and his wife Sabria have lost three of their sons in the fighting. The father says he gave his sons to the revolution and would sacrifice all his children for freedom and dignity. The mother disagrees. Her sons meant the world to her, she said. She told them to flee. Instead, they went to fight. Now, seven grandchildren have no fathers. The wives have no husbands. This is what the army did to one Syrian army colonel who defected to join the rebels. They're worse than animals, his brother told us. If I catch any of them, I'll slit their throats. The kids here are eager to show us shells and shrapnel that they've collected. In the city of Aleppo, eight-year-old Mohammed lies wounded with shrapnel throughout his body. Far away in western capitals, there are calls for the United States to step in on the side of the rebels to help depose the government of Bashar al-Assad and bring this war to an end. The debate goes on, too long already for Mohammed, his cousin, who the BBC captured passing out from pain, and for Mohammed's older brother, lying beside the suffering boy, already dead. For Nightline, I'm Alex Marquard in northern Syria.